Welcome back to another fantastic video. Today we're going to be talking about actions that Great Britain took to kind of spur on or hasten the American Revolution. So starting off with the French and Indian War, this was a war fought between 1754 and 1763, and it was fought over land in Pennsylvania and Ohio. And I want you to also understand that even though it kind of sounds like the French and the Indians were fighting against each other here, they were actually fighting um, alongside each other against the colonists and the British. OK, so the British and the colonists were fighting um, on the same team during this war. So the French and Indian War wraps up in 1763. And one thing we know about war is that it costs a lot of money. Right. So if you're Great Britain and you have just sent your military over to protect the colonists from um, the French and the Indians during this war, then you think, hey, I've got to rebuild my treasury. I've got to make some money again, try to recoup my losses. And the way that they thought they were going to do that was to tax the colonies. And Great Britain thought that they were well within their right to do so because the colonies um, were their territory. Like they could do that if they wanted to. OK, so we want to look at three different acts and we're going to talk more about the impact that these had on the colonists in class. But the first was the Sugar Act. This was passed in 1764 and this was the, the one that was passed most closely after the French and Indian War ended. So the Sugar Act put a tax on anything dealing with sugar. So we're talking about sugar, molasses, rum, which was a big deal to the colonists. Next, we have the Stamp Act, which was passed in 1765. And this was going to put a tax on any paper product, okay? So even though it's the Stamp Act, and we think of a stamp as something you put on a letter, uh, the Stamp Act would have required colonists to actually buy um, like specific stamped paper, kind of like an embossed paper. Um, and that was going to uh, be used for newspapers and birth certificates and marriage licenses and any legal documents. And it also would have put a tax on um, playing cards and dice. OK, so this one was really unpopular in the colonies. And the third one we want to look at is the Tea Act of 1773. And I want you to keep in mind that there were tons and tons of Tea Acts. OK, so this one in 1773 didn't actually put another tax on tea. OK, it did a couple of things. It reinforced a previous tax on tea. So there was a tax on tea before this and they were like, hey, yeah, you still got to pay that. But it also gave the East India Company a monopoly on tea. And we'll talk more about that in class, OK? So then, of course, this leads to the Boston Tea Party. And you guys know the story behind the Boston Tea Party, where our founding fathers dressed up as Mohawk Indians and boarded the ships and dumped uh, lots and lots of tea overboard and had a big tea party in Boston Harbor. Well, because of those actions, um, we see the creation of the Intolerable Acts which according to the colonists were intolerable. They, were, uh, they weren't gonna stand for it. These were acts that um, really clamped down on any freedom that the colonists had. So then that brings us to the next question of, do we want independence? Like, do we as the colonists, do we really want to um, become independent or do we want to stay connected uh, to Great Britain? So that brings about this, uh, the meeting known as the Albany Congress and basically, it's a whole bunch of different people from different colonies in the, uh, what would become the United States. And they come together and they start talking about independence. Like maybe we want to unify uh, these colonies as a country um, and become independent of Great Britain. And that led to the creation of what was called the Albany Plan of Union which was this idea that all of the colonies were going to join together and we were going to have one big uh, representative body that was going to make decisions for us. And that plan failed. And the reason that it failed was because people thought that giving that much power to a representative body would not be any different than Great Britain. OK, so I'm going to stop there. If you guys have any questions, let me know.